Nick from Australian Native B. This is the part two video of the John Clump interview and I wanted to ask John about his concrete hives and how he makes them. So you'll cut from the vinyl onto the, or transfer from vinyl onto the plastic? And no, no, the vinyl forms a mould too. Oh, There'll okay. be two parts. This will be the outer part, then the vine will be on the inside to create the pattern. And this creates the outer structure. Right, so it'll have, it's made upside down, but it'll have like a tower. And you, you, the hardest part, Nick, <laughs> is to think of everything in reverse, because everything you cut out will project out of the face. Mm. Yeah, so that's the hardest part. And it's easy to get mixed up sometimes and think, oh, I've cut this the right way and you haven't. And then you start again from scratch. So it's very, it can be frustrating. So that just slides down there. And the vinyl makes the pattern as well. It's a combination of the two. So that, they're the panels. One of these panels. Is this secret? How did you cut those out? Very careful. <laughs> it takes you hours and hours. It's a labour of love, it really is. With a fine jigsaw and you just keep working at it. You can pretty safely gotta say gotta get nobody's going to copy you. You've got to get it all the right angle, otherwise yeah. it won't. Yeah, it's got to have a relief angle, otherwise it won't clear. And that will go, that will sit in that one. And that one. We'll sit in that one down there. That'll be curved, of course. And uh, hopefully it'll produce a really nice image. And they're in a two litre box. And they have been in that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 1980 something, so a long time, and they've maintained their colony in that all that time. Um, so they will quite happily accept smaller accommodation and do well in it. And they flew in there by themselves? No, 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 I, I probably didn't have a big box or something, I was doing a rescue and I might have transferred a little bit of food with a queen cell and a bit of stores in there when I was doing a rescue into a bigger box or something like that. And um, it just took, took well, and uh, I've just left them stay in that little box all that time. They seem to be fairly happy. It's quite a roundy big tree, isn't it? It is. <laughs> big bottle tree. And uh, in South America, I understand, they get um, plastic bottles, two litre bottles, or something of that capacity. Um, wrap them in um, paper and then black plastic and hang them in trees. They fill them with um, some of the resin, the wash of the resin, and then the bees will take up uh, in the swarming season, will take up in the, well we tried that here for, I tried it for years and never had any success. I noticed a lot of the bees I was rescuing from things like um, compost bins and um, uh, even bags containing old compost material like uh, I had a, quite locally I had a, um, a fertiliser bag that had been used to, for compost material and they'd curled the top over but hadn't sealed the top and the bees had moved in there and, and established on top of the, on top of the uh, compost. And I think there's a link between something in the composting material and what draws them to it. Because if you think about it, in hollow trees, you've got um, usually the detritus from termites and other insects that live in the hollow tree. You've got that decaying vegetable material as a, as a basis, if you like, uh, in the bottom of the hive. Um, they seem to be attracted to it. So what I've done with some of these is I've just put uh, old uh, bit of grass, you know, composting grass and so forth in the middle. And the other day, it's not happening today, but the other day you can see from the indications around here, they were showing some interest in that hive the other day. So 
it'll just be worth it, just an experiment. Yeah. All the Kadagi resin. And I'm, I'm a long way from the nearest Kadagi, they're probably down near the school. Which is, how far is that? Oh, I think in a straight line, it probably haven't measured it on Google or anything, but I reckon it would have to be well over 500 metres. Wow, okay, there you go. They've carried it all the way back. Yep, they love it. Try to impress with big abbreviations and edit the writings. There's all these old records, yeah. Wow. They don't seem to do as well here near the coast. You can see there's just so much of that box is vacant. And that I've had that for a couple of years now. The Cockerelli. <clears throat> well, that's what Alan's called them. That was what they were known as originally. Cause I found 